Finally, we're fully healthy, and we are ready for this matchup against the Florida Panthers in the Eastern Conference Final. We have had some lineup changes. Offensively, we are rewarding players for how they have done so far this year, or so far this postseason. So things are looking pretty good, and really all four lines should be able to contribute offensively. Defensively, though, is where it changes a lot, because Joel Lampkin is fully healthy, which means Carlo has to come back in the lineup, and Charlie McAvoy and Evan Bouchard have both been sent down. Now, Bouchard was up to an 84, he dropped to an 83 when we dropped him, but again, he is a depth defenseman. Carlo is a top six. If we drop Carlo, his value is going to plummet. So we have no choice. And of course, McAvoy still listed as a minor league player. So Carlo, who has had a very rough postseason, will be back with Yusuf Valamaki, and we will hope that they can get their games under control because we are going to need them. The Florida Panthers won 47 games in the regular season. A very, very respectable record. So let's take a look at their team. 95 offense, 91 defense, 85 goaltending. No idea who their cap or who their top player is because that is obviously not Aaron Ekblad. But we will find out in just a moment. So here we go. And it's Barkoff, is it not? That is Barkoff. I should have known that. But anyway, taking a look at their team. And it is pretty interesting. Top line, you have Jonathan Huberdeau, and actually, as we always do, how many games did they play? 11 games, so Huberdeau, 12 points in 11 games on their top line. He is an 88 overall. Alex Barkoff, a 93, he had 9 points, or he, ha he has 9 points, I should say, so far this postseason. And Riley Smith, 7 goals, 5 helpers. That is rough, and that is a dangerous top line, no doubt about it. Second line, Hunter Shimkaruk is there. He has four points in this postseason, an 84 overall. And then it gets interesting. Johan Gustafsson, the number one overall pick from the 2019 draft. 22 years old, 91 overall, medium elite potential. That is rough. That is very rough. The right wing on that line, Gustav Nyquist. Hopefully he doesn't try to blind anybody in this series. But again, that is a dangerous top six. And it doesn't get much easier. Third pairing, or third line, I should say, we start off with Logan Couture, Henrik Borgstrom, who of course is a creative player that we put into this series. And he is looking pretty damn good for the Panthers right about now. And Jonathan Marcheseau is still there, and he has 10 points this postseason. Fourth line, it doesn't get much better. Jared McCann is with Nick Bjugstad, a fourth liner, unreal, and Isaac Ratcliffe, the 38th overall pick from the 2017 draft. That is rough. Needless to say, that is rough. The lowest overall guy is an 82. They have two guys over a 90. That is, oh, that is tough to deal with. Defensively, what's going on here? <laughs> Interesting. You start off with Ian Makoshin, who is a creative player, although he might have been put... Some of the players who I say are creative might have been put in by EA. you got to remember, I've had these custom rosters since really before NHL came out with his first roster update. But anyway, top pairing right defenseman, Thomas Shemich, Shemich. Thomas. Why is he there when you look at the second pairing, that is Nathan Beaulieu and Aaron Ekblad? Why is that not their top pairing? I do wonder. Third pairing is Keith Yandel, now 35 years old, and he is still on a rough contract. And he is with Timothy Liljegren, who surprisingly is only at an 82 overall. But yeah, interesting. I mean, why Makoshin and Ekblad? I mean, if that's my team, it's Makoshin, Ekblad, Bolu, Liljegren, Yandel, and Thomas, but I guess, I don't know. It's working for them, so how much can I criticize them? The goaltending. It is a tandem between Cam Talbot, who's only at an 84 overall. He had a 9-1-1 save percentage. And Samuel Montembal, who has also played a few games this postseason, neither of which are lighting the world on fire. So goaltending might be a bit of a weakness. And as far as injuries, Vincent Trocek is injured. 
which means he would probably be in instead of Isaac Ratcliffe, which means their offense would be even better. You have Troy Stetcher as well, who finished at an 81 overall, which is pretty surprising. And Adam Mascherin, I believe, who is a scratch. So, damn, the Florida Panthers are a pretty good team in real life, currently, and the sim. But let's hope that we are just a little bit better, which on paper, obviously, we are. But you never know. For sure. And actually, I quickly, before we start the sim, I need to go back and look at our goaltending situation because I did go best lines and I want to make sure that the main man, Hanu Herme, is still in goal. And indeed he is, so we are good to go. It is game one. We, of course, have home ice advantage. Let's hope that we can take advantage of it. So first period of the first game, let's see what happens. And it's Nolan Patrick with the opening goal. Cam Talbot between the pipes for the Panthers. But that is a good start for the Bruins. Second period. Can we add to it? Yes, we can. Strom Wall and Tufty. And now that the group, the gang, is back together, everyone's fully healthy. Knock on wood, that might change. But we're up 3-0 at the end of 40 minutes. And we should... Granted, Hanu Herme is facing a lot of rubber here. 26 saves, now 27 on the night. We should be able to hold on, and Hanu Herme is standing on his head right now. The Panthers haven't had a shot. They went about five minutes there, I think, without a shot. Hanu Herme, a 30-save shutout in a 3-0 victory for the Bruins in Game 1. A beautiful start. Herme wasn't our chosen starter obviously for the first series but he has absolutely absolutely declared himself as the main goalie on this team and Shane Finger if he's ready next year might have some strong competition but obviously that is a little bit of a ways away for now we are worried about the Panthers even though we took that first game there is still a long way to go, so let's get right back into it. Game two, no reason to make any line changes. We are good to go, as I accidentally simmed the first period. But you know what? That's okay. It was scoreless anyway, so why bother hyping it up? Second period, can we get that lead? Can we grab the lead? We can. Debrincat and Stromwall with the goals. We're up 2-0. Held them to 12 shots through 40 minutes. Hanu Herme is still a beast. David Posternock on the power play. David Posternock on the power play again. And finally, Hanu Herme is beaten. Five shutout periods to start this series. Too little too late, though, for the Panthers with that goal because the Bruins have cruised to a 2-0 series lead. Two power play goals for Pasta. The empty netter for Sinitian. And the Bruins, <laughs> things are looking good. Things are looking good. A three-point night, not too bad. Not too bad at all. This is good. I was hoping, especially after the Hab series, that this wouldn't be as stressful. When I was looking at their lineup, I thought we might be in a decent amount of trouble. But outscoring them 8-1 to one over the first two games... Needless to say, that's the start that we were hoping for, and we will continue. It is Game 3. Again, no reason to make any changes. This team is on fire right now. Will that continue in Game 3? I certainly hope so. So let's do it. Sim the first period, and we are just unreal right now. David Posternock again, and Riley Tufty makes it 2-0 on Cam Talbot. Poor Cam Talbot. 18 shots to 6 for the Bruins. Second period. Can we keep it up? We can't, but the Panthers still cannot get on the board. Third period. Let's go. And that's the thing. As I was about to say, Hanu Herme has been great in this game in particular. He hasn't had to face too many shots. Jonathan Huberto gets the goal back, but we've been able to shut him down now for a couple of minutes after. We have a power play. Clayton Keller gets the goal. Our power play is unreal. Barkoff brings them back to within one. Some fin on fin violence, but it's too little. Too late. The Panthers finally get some offense going in that third period with Huberto and Barkoff, that top line, trying their best. Clayton Keller's goal was the difference maker on the power play. 
and the Bruins are cruising. It is a 3-0 series lead. Huberto, the first star. It did not matter. This series has been easy as you like. And this team is incredible. Who took that penalty? I do wonder. Oh, but it was Thomas Shimish, 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 whatever the hell your name is. Poor bastard. Poor bastard. The Bruins are cruising. Life is good. Let's go. Game four. Again, we don't have to make any changes. We don't have to do anything. We just have to sit here and watch our team hopefully sweep the Panthers clean out of the playoffs and seal their spot in the Stanley Cup final. Let's go. First period of game four. And the Panthers aren't done yet. Wow, Hanu Herme gets blasted. Neither goalie did that well in that first period. God damn. Um, wow, okay, we, we need to talk. So Jeff Skinner and Alex DeBrincat gave us a 2-0 lead. All right. We had two goals on seven shots, and then Barkoff, McCann, and March. So <laughs> this is not over. And whether or not Talbot and Herme are still in, in goal for each team, I do not know. So, a little bit of a scare. Let's see, can we turn it around in the second period? Yes, we can. My God, the offense keeps coming. These poor goalies. Talbot was still in. He gives up three goals. Skinner, Sagan, and Tufty. Riley Smith had one for the Panthers. It is five to four. Nine goals on 33 shots combined this is, don't, if you're, <laughs> show show this game to someone that's like, all right, you want to play goalie? This is what you don't do. This is awful. Third period underway, though. Can we survive? Maybe we can. It's Alex Barkov. Wow. Or uh, fucking Sasha Barkov. Call him what you will. Another power play for the Panthers. I don't know what to say. Ten goals combined. We have a late power play. We can't do anything with it. Are we going to overtime? We are not. Riley Smith. No, we are. Shape Theodore. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Twelve goals. Twelve goals. Hanu Herme and Cam Talbot both having a nightmare of a performance. I, I don't know what to say, especially at the end there. Riley Smith with 107 to go, and then Shea Theodore with the big fuck you, pal. This is not over. Overtime. Are the Panthers going to live to fight another day? We have a five-on-three power play. Wow, we couldn't take advantage of that. If the Panthers win here, I can't even be mad because we should have capitalized on a five-on-three power play in overtime. We're still moving on here. Under seven to go. A power play for the Panthers is killed. This game is insane. We are going to double overtime, tied six all. Let's go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is unbelievable. And Johan Gustafsson ends it. The Florida Panthers are not done yet. A crazy seven to six final in game four. I, I can't even. I think I think I finally know what people mean when they say I can't even. It's holy shit. A 7-6 final. The Panthers doubled, more than doubled their goal total. Wow. All right. Well, we're still not going to make any changes, but we are back in Boston for game 5. I was hoping we wouldn't have to go, but hey, we get more playoff money, right? So that's good. First period of game 5. Can we uh, can we please just kill them here? How about a nice three goal first period? Or scoreless, we outshot him 12 to five and that is relevant. Second period, it's a goal apiece. Clayton Keller and Ian McCoshin. Talbot's still in for the Panthers. And that sets up this third period. Can the Panthers hold on? That's not a good start if they hope to do that. A power play goal for Stromwall and we have the two one lead. Not too bad. Halfway through the third, the Panthers need a goal. Can we take advantage of their aggressiveness? Or will Hanu Herme shut the door? Things are looking good. And there it is. So a crazy game four 
But in the end, that is all the Panthers had left. A 2-1 victory in Game 5, and the Bruins, as you would hope, have sealed their spot. We are going to the Stanley Cup Final. That Game 4, 7-6 Final. That is unbelievable. <laughs> but in the end, thankfully, it went our way. And on the other side, interestingly enough, the St. Louis Blues have a 3-1 lead on the Colorado Avalanche. Could it be Boston-St. Louis? A series that could potentially happen in the Fantasy Draft series as well. But quickly, let's take a look before we find out who we are playing. At the point total, Stromwall, Wah, Sagan, Pasta. Like these guys are firing on all cylinders, performing as they should be. And as we scroll down... Towards the bottom, mostly our defense. Gurionov, only four points, so that is pretty disappointing, but he has been in the bottom six, so I am not too disappointed with that. And aside from one nightmare of a game, Hanu Herme has been great. Now a 12-4 and record with a 935 save percentage. Not too bad at all. Let's find out. Let's not delay any longer. Let's find out. Who will it be? Can the Colorado Avalanche pull off an amazing comeback? Or will it? And nope, it's over. It is over. The St. Louis Blues have done it. And in the Stanley Cup Final, Blues and Bruins. And what could possibly happen in both series, which is absolutely crazy. But you're looking at the two best teams. In the NHL this year, the best from the East, the best from the West, meeting in the Stanley Cup Final. You could not ask for a better matchup. And we will find out. We will find out. We went through Pittsburgh in six, Montreal in seven, Florida in five. They went through Winnipeg in six, Dallas in five, Colorado in five. It is St. Louis and Boston in the next episode. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. After this episode, I certainly am. That will do it for this one, guys. Of course, as always, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already to help support me and my channel. It is greatly appreciated, and I will see you guys in the next one, the Stanley Cup Final Blues and Bruins. Let's do this.